I, I'm also uh, you know, entirely intrigued about how a guy who, uh, who, who designed this, uh, uh, this algae-based uh, polyurethane foam uh, then also had the, uh, uh, you know, sort of the inspiration to then use that as a sorting material uh, to uh, basically combat uh, oil spills. So with, uh, with that as an introduction, Jim, and, and I think everyone in this room uh, besides me now uh, knows you, but uh, I think so, yeah. I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, you want to um, this is a PC, so I have no idea what to do with this thing. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you. This might play that. Kevin's going to save me right now. Are you, you going to be our IT? Are we, are we working off this one? <laughs> I feel more comfortable like this. Um, you know, it's interesting what we've done and what we've accomplished in a short time. I, I grew up playing music and became a pro surfer and moved to California and enjoyed a great life. I've always owned my own company since I was nine years old, my dad will tell you. I was always infatuated with toilet paper and toothpaste. Nine years old, I came up and told my dad, whoever makes this stuff is brilliant. This is the business I want to be in. So, um, I'm the CEO of Artie Foam, uh, which is the Rolls Royce of surfboard foam around the world. 85% of the World Tour rides are surfboard foam. Um, and surfboards are horrible for the planet, and they're getting better. So, we're the first company in the world to create polyurethane foam, pulling the oil out, petroleum out, and putting in algae oil. Right? We're known as the leaders in the high performance foam, right? So if we come out with something, it's got to be the best. Million dollars, a lot of prayers, a lot of cussing, lost all my hair. Three years later, we've come to, to succeed and we be released in probably somewhere around January. Uh, obviously, we're surfers, we're not smart enough to pull off something like that. So we worked with UCSD and um, Dr. Stephen Mayfield of Algenesis, Mike Pomeroy, Skip Burkhart, just incredible people. Um, Dr. Mayfield is one of my really close friends and he actually lives down the street from me. He's a surfer. And one day my partners are in the water and they said, he was bragging about what he can make out of algae. Right? He said, I can make anything. If you make it with oil, I can, I can make it with algae oil. And so my two partners, I wasn't there, and. Uh, they looked at him and said, well, why can't we make surfboard foam? Oh, yeah, we can make surfboard foam. Yeah, three years, almost four years later, we did it, but man, I'll tell you what. But it really, when we were, I was speaking about the triple helix, and sorry if I bore you guys, because I spoke about it last night, um, with Michael. Michael came in and, and really helped us even bring it to a whole different level, right? So that's one of the, the companies, and we're growing, and we're excited to use bioresins on our boards. Um, we use UV light now to set the catalyst so there's no fumes for our, our guys that are glassing the boards. And so we literally developed the first sustainable surfboards on the planet that are high performance. And um, not a giant market, but a great market to be involved in, a lot of cool people. Um, and so with that, we have a big factory down in Ensenada, 50,000 square feet, state of the art. and. Uh, we use a lot of hydraulic fluids, right, for our, our presses and our molds and everything else we have down there. We had a pretty major oil uh, uh, spill, um, hydraulic fluid spill. One of our hoses came off, we had, a, we had to cap it, but we had 30 to 40 gallons of hydraulic fluid on the ground. And if you've ever seen that, it's you know, about as big as this whole area up here. And if you've ever cleaned something like that up, it's a nightmare. Um, my partner was standing there, kind of panicking, not knowing what to do, and he looked over, and there's a trash bag of foam dust. And he grabbed it, and he just threw it on there. 
Well, within a second, it had soaked up like 10 gallons. So of course, I grabbed five more bags, <laughs> and they soaked the whole thing up in less than five minutes. They cleaned up 40 gallons. And it was, he called me about it, and I was like, well, I was thinking efficiency. I was like, that's great. That's awesome. Thanks, click. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I go down a week later, he's got this little white pillow, 10 by 10, and he says, hey, uh, check this out. Two gallons of dirty oil in a, in, in a bucket of water and super dirty oil. Five minutes later with this pillow, all the oil is gone. And he holds it up and it's black as night. He goes, hey, uh, you think there's a business in this? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, now I get it. The light bulb went on, right? So I started looking into the sorbent industry. And actually, is Flavio in here? I thought you ran out of here because I was thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, this thing gonna work, I'm over it. So, as you can see, uh, I did a presentation to the DOD, right? With the Maritime Alliance, incredible, Disruptive Technologies presentation. But what I kinda wanted to do here is just kinda show you that there's real world solutions, just like the other presenters that are, are working. You know, there's problems and we're working on sustainable solutions, right? I'm gonna come to this, what are sorbents, right? Sorbents, you know, and Flavio was a great mentor and guide for me in some of this because Flavio was the first one to say, Jimmy, I can't use this powder out in the ocean because if one of the props or something cuts the pillow, you got, now you got oil and you got this powder, you know, this, this surfboard foam powder all over the place, it would be a nightmare, right? And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But we can use these pillows on land. And our last presenter is absolutely correct. People think that the industry is out there in oil spills. It's not. The biggest industry happens every day on land. Uh, think Caterpillar. Think solar turbines. Think DOD, the motor pools. Right? Think of your household, your hot rod in the, in the, in the garage, you know? So it really is a big industry. So $20 billion a year is spent on sorbent products alone. To give you an idea how big that is, 22 billion is the market cap for toys for children. That'll tell you how big this industry is, right? So, 20 billion dollar industry, you bet I got into it because I was like, wow, this is interesting. Get into it and figure out that the two best sorbents in efficiency are polyurethane that really no one uses. It's too expensive to get. I got tons of it just sitting around down there. And secondly, polypropylene, which is an extruded plastic, right? And so I started delving into this because of Flavio. He's like, I can't use it. I was like, well, I gotta find something else for you to use. So I'm gonna go after that market, right? So I started looking into it and I started calling all over the world. Hey, I need this stuff repurposed, recycled. I wanna look into this, but I can't take virgin product from China or India or somewhere else and go clean up an oil spill. It just didn't ring with me. I was just like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. So I need it repurposed. I need it made out of repurposed plastics. No one, crickets for a year. So I went after a manufacturer in Wisconsin. Great group, great people. They've been in the industry forever. I talked to the CEO. We had melding of the minds. And I said, listen, man, the world's changing. Luckily, he is an accountant by trade. So when I said, listen, what if you could get all your product for free, basically? Wouldn't that be better for your margin? And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, there's plastics all over the place. Why can't we use all those other plastics in the industry, collect all this stuff, and figure out a way to smelt it, whatever we gotta do, so that I can get these polypropylene products to the market that are completely reused, recycled, repurposed. We did it about a year later, and I can't wait to show Flavio tomorrow. I told him earlier when I saw him, we grew up since you, since I last saw you. So today we're introducing to the marketplace a totally repurposed, recycled, top-notch sorbent for some of the biggest industry out there. So um, I'm just kind of talking to you guys. I'll move it along. Um, it's a cool shot. This is uh, John John Florence, one of our pro surfers. 
He's the best surfer in the world. He's like the Michael Jordan of surfing. This kid is unbelievable. And that actually, he was the youngest winner of uh, the Eddie Akai Big Wave Contest in uh, Hawaii. And that's on an algae board right there, and no one knew it. And it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, protecting our playground, this is what we're all about, right? And so when we're talking about, um, uh, these are pads, these are polypropylene, this is polypropylene, and these are the pillows, right? So it kind of shows, shows you what we do. They, they are used in the ocean. They, this one right here, uh, one on a board is the best boom in the horizons boat, right? But now we're making it 100% recycled, repurposed product, right? That wasn't done then, now, now it's being done. Um, it's just, it, it's, it's exciting because when you talk about all these plastics in the oceans, and we're already working with it, right? Um, we're actually solving the problem. There's a huge problem. There's oil spilled and chemicals spilled every day, which is great for me. Um, and and I, we figured out a way to go after it and, and use a repurposed product. And you're talking about life cycle, right? So I'll answer a question that might be in your brain. What do you do with it after it's soaked with oil? A lot of people ask me that. Well, a lot of places, especially here in the United States, where we're a little bit more far forward, a lot of it goes to hazmat facilities. And typically those hazmat facilities have an engine. They burn it and they create electricity with that engine. So it's like we're taking this purpose product, we, we figured out a solution, a new product to give to an industry, they clean it up, it goes to hazmat, it gets burned, generates electricity, and then boom, they sell it back to a state or a city or something like that. So you're talking about this whole life cycle, right? And that's where we're going. It's like how many times can we use something before we put it into a, a, a dump, right? Or can we just burn it and get rid of it and use that exhaust to generate electricity? Um, here's an interesting one here. We're working really closely with waste management. Super cool company, giant, $86 billion company. But they're listening to us and they like working with us. I don't know why, but they do. Um, <laughs> but one of, their, one of their clients is solar turbines right down here in San Diego, right? Awesome company. Uh, I meet with them later this week. I don't know if you've ever been to solar turbines campus. Uh, have any of you guys ever been to solar turbines? You gotta take a golf cart. <laughs> I was like, I don't need a golf cart, I'll just walk this thing. Like five miles later, I was like, hey man, I could've used that golf cart. But anyway, um, they have brand new pieces of bubble wrap. Giant, as big as like half of this wall. And we took that bubble wrap and started wrapping all of our finished surfboards for the planet. And so now we're bringing that bubble wrap to our shapers, they're, they're the big brands, and they're wrapping their boards. We put a sticker on it, blah, blah, blah. I'll get this done real quick. Um, this is a horrible foam product. It's a polyurethane squishy foam for packing. They call it gray foam. The dumps won't even take it anymore. China's not taking it. Waste management they didn't know what to do with it. Everyone's worried about it because it's needed. We figured out.